lovers. Today we are going to talk about bacteria that live on stony meteorites. Well, what these researchers wanted to study was actually the colonization process of meteorites. Or in other way, how bacteria are able to start inhabiting these objects and form a bacterial community. So when meteorites enter the Earth's atmosphere, the conditions are so harsh that they practically sterilize them. And when they reach the Earth's surface, the only possible contamination of bacteria or other microorganisms comes from the lower layers of the Earth's atmosphere. But this contamination is so low that it practically wouldn't influence the formation of a bacterial community. So these researchers were interested in finding out how the bacterial community forms on meteorites after these arrive in a sterile way to the Earth's surface. And why study colonization on meteorites and not on any other sterile object on the Earth's surface? Well, there has been previous studies that have focused on volcanic lava. So when lava erupts from the volcano, uh, the temperature is so high that the lava is sterile. And as it starts cooling down, it starts being colonized by a different variety of microorganisms. But what the researchers have seen is that usually new lava falls on old lava. So the chemical composition of the new sterile lava is similar or practically the same to the one that was there before. And at the end of the day, the new lava, which was once sterile, starts being colonized by different microorganisms and ends up developing a community of microorganisms that is the same as the lava that's beneath it. So the question is, do the bacterial communities that form on sterile objects always end up being the same as the surface that's below it? Or does the chemical composition of the object influence the formation of the bacterial community? And that is why it's interesting to study meteorites. Because when they land on the Earth's surface, the chemical composition of the meteorite is very different from the one that you can find on the soil or on the surface where it lands. What the researchers saw when they studied the bacterial composition of meteorites is that one of the main bacterial taxa that they could find was Ruvirobacter radiotolerance. And this is a bacteria that's well known for its ability to resist high temperatures, desiccation, and high amounts of ultraviolet radiation. And this makes sense if you take into account the environment where the meteorites were found. So I didn't mention this before, but this study took place in Australia in the Nulava Plain. And this plain is characterized for having extreme ultraviolet light values in summer and very low amounts of rainfall with high evaporation rates. They also found in the meteorites sulfur and iron reducing bacteria. And this makes sense taking into account the chemical composition of the meteorite as they are rich in nickel, iron and iron sulfides. The bacteria that are able to reduce iron and sulfur that were found were mainly members of Geobacter and Desulfovibrio. So as you can see, from the bacterial composition point of view, there is an influence on the environment, like Rubrobacter radiotolerance, which is able to resist the harsh conditions to which it's exposed to in the plain in Australia. But there is also a component of the taxa that is shaped by the chemical composition of the rock. So in this case, it would be the bacteria that are able to reduce sulfur and iron. So now the question is, what's the bacterial community like in the soil that is next to the meteorite? Is it similar or is it different? And this is one of the most interesting things that these researchers saw. And that was that the bacterial community of the meteorites was more similar to other meteorites than it was to the bacterial community in the soils around it. And this suggests that the chemical composition of a substrate is very important when shaping the bacterial community that is going to inhabit it. And in the case of the meteorites, even after thousands of years, the communities on the meteorites will still be different from those that are in the soil underneath them. So thank you for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please give me a like or subscribe to my channel or comment my video. Um, I have left the link to the paper in the description and there is also subtitles in English and in Spanish. And I will see you next week.